One of the key components in single man CQB is the ability to retract the gun. And when you're in ships and confined spaces, you have to get creative in breaking your gun down. Retraction is not just taking the gun off a stock well on your shoulder and then pulling the gun back. It's literally lifting your arm and pulling it under your arm to be able to traverse the front of the gun where the potential threat is. First and foremost, this is not about other people or organizations. This is about information. Secondly, I don't care if you were a SEAL, a two-year officer, or Santa Claus. The only thing that matters is does the information make sense and do we think this way or that way is the best way? And lastly, your resume doesn't validate your information, the information validates itself. If that's the first time you've seen that technique, I will do my best to try to make sense of it. I won't go through this whole original video, but if you would like me to, help me help you by subscribing to the channel, feed the algorithm down below, and send this video to your hitter friends. I don't have any interest in discrediting any person or any companies because first of all, the things you see people doing is not easy from an entrepreneurial perspective. And that deserves a certain level of respect. People should be able to do whatever it is they want to do and enjoy what they are doing. It's up to you as a consumer to align your values and principles wherever you see fit. Use what you like and don't use what you don't like. More importantly, actually go out there and do the thing because otherwise it doesn't matter anyways. I wanted to make this video without using the original video, but when I tried to put it together, it never made sense for me to tell you what was said and how it was done instead of just showing you. That being said, developing tactics or techniques purely from personal experiences without providing verifiable information can be problematic. And in my experience, that has often been the standard for training. For maybe those who are not aware, when crossing the threshold, there's two objectives. Our body armor is squared up towards the threat area in the direction that we're going, and our rifle is pointed also in the direction we're going towards the threat area. There's several taught methods to accomplish that task. First is a high port or a high ready position. So as we're moving towards the threshold, as soon as we break the plane of the threshold, the rifle comes up into our shoulder and then we're stepping towards the threat area. The next method is what I call the CQB method. The rifle is short stocked up over your shoulder as you step into the threshold on that first step, orientated towards the threat area, and then we're pushing towards the threat area. The next method is a low ready position. So as we're moving towards the threshold, as soon as we break the plane of the threshold, take that first step inside, our muzzle's coming up on target, and then we're moving towards the threat area. And then we have keeping the rifle in your shoulders, which is my preferred method of doing that. So keeping the rifle in my shoulder, moving towards the threat area. As soon as I break the plane of the threshold, on target, moving towards the threat area. So if I just took it like this, and I've married the buttstock, and I'm looking, it would take a lot of time for me to lull and slew the gun back and forth. Be very difficult to navigate that. The ability to move the gun back and forth is transitioning between targets. It is moving and shooting. If I have my rifle in my shoulders and I'm transitioning from this target to that target, or from here to there, it's gonna take me the same amount of time if I'm here to go to here. It's the same movement, there's no difference. It would take a lot of time for me to lull and slew the gun back and forth. Be very difficult to navigate that. I'm gonna step out of the way of the threshold. I'm gonna extend simultaneously and collapse my sector. You're gonna see the second part of that clip again. I had to grab it and put it behind the first clip because as you can see, they kind of contradict one another. If we're saying that it takes us a long time to slew the gun back and forth, and it's difficult to navigate that, but then we enter the room in that retracted method but as we step towards the threat area, to are bringing the rifle into our shoulder, we just added an additional step. And therefore, it cannot make that process faster. It's going to make that process inherently slower. On top of that, I'm extending the gun, which means if I come here and I'm extending it, I'm giving a, a good signature to where I'm located before uh, I get to the bad guy, before I identify him. So he can grab my barrel, which has happened in Task Force, I know a lot. So I want to retract it to have it angled here. In some of the other clips you're going to see, I want you to pay attention to where the barrel is on the different methods as they go forward and compare those to, you know, any of the methods that you use that I already went over of entering the threshold and see where short stocking or retracting the rifle underneath your arm compares to those other methods. So for me, as I'm entering the threshold and I'm deciding that I'm gonna to go to the left and I'm still collapsing the room down, once I commit to the corner, I'm eating up this whole space because with the method that I use, even if I have my rifle 
it's just all the way, uh, the buttstock's all the way extended. The only thing that has to happen is my muzzle has to start entering the room first. And that happens at an extreme like this. Okay, that's the ideal way of doing it. If I entered like this, well, that's not good because yes, I did give up quite a bit of information before I crossed the threshold. But this is what it looks like coming through the threshold using the rifle in my shoulder method. And this is what the short stock method looks like or the retracted method. So let's set up the camera and let's see from the suspect's perspective in the corner what that might look like. I have heard in the past that idea of exposure or giving up a signature before you enter the room. But at the moment when you're committing to the room, this is happening very quickly. Um, and so I'll show you what it looks like where that could be a problem. And if it is a problem, you basically just entered the room wrong. So I can clear the majority of the room. And when I come into it, I'm retracted. But I, when I enter this room and I see that I could literally see there's not a threat, I'm clearing with my eyes and not having to run to the point of domination to clear. So as I come in and I step into this space by myself, I'm gonna step out of the way of the threshold. I'm gonna extend simultaneously and collapse my sector. As you come into the room and you see that your corner is clear, yes, you need to start collapsing the room back down, identifying other threats or other threat areas. But if I come into the room in the retracted method and I step in and I see that the corner is clear, why would I waste the time to bring the rifle up into my shoulder to start collapsing the room back down? Yes, I agree that when we're doing that, our rifle should be in our shoulder. But if we're also saying that this retracted method is the fastest way to maneuver your rifle around, well, if I'm here and I see that it's clear, why would I put the rifle into my shoulders if this is faster and not just collapse the room back down until I see a target and then come up on target. I step into the point of domination, immediately snapshot with my eyes, it's clear, extend the gun, collapse it, and then bring the gun down. Because at the point at which I identify the bad guy with my eyes, I need to have a shooting solution. The opposite of that is I come here and I'm already compromised and I'm getting stitched up while I'm trying to confirm where the bad guy's at. With either of those two methods, two things have to be true, regardless if you're retracted underneath your arm or your rifle's up into your shoulder. And those two things to engage the threat are you have to see it and your muzzle has to be pointed at it. And so it doesn't matter if I have the rifle retracted underneath my arm, I'm still seeing the threat here and technically I could engage. And that's the same as if I had the rifle in my shoulder. The difference, in my opinion, is of course accountability with gunfire and shooting from here or shooting with the rifle in your shoulder. And as we already pointed out, or as I already pointed out, there is no real difference when moving quickly, unless you saw one that I didn't, using either method to come into the room as far as exposure and getting stitched up. When he steps here and he's coming into this center fed room, he's already cleared 80% of the room with the snapshot that he took before he entered the breach point. So as he steps here, he sees it's clear. So if I step here and snapshot this point of domination, I could literally snap the gun this way into that point of domination, which could be faster. I, I won't debate the guys that talk about slowing a gun versus the taking the gun and then breaking the barrel this way and snapping it here. Now, I think what happened in that last demonstration is he was supposed to come into the room using the method as he had been showing, which was the retracted method, but probably resorted to what made the most sense in that moment as he was doing it, short stock the rifle up over his shoulder, hit the target in his corner, and then transitioned to hit the target behind him. And let's just say, for example, we use that method where we are coming into the room with the rifle retracted underneath our arm. Inherently, it has to be faster than coming into the room with the rifle already in your shoulder to engage opposing targets because, again, we're adding an extra step into that process.
Now you may be saying, well, this is just a way of doing it, and I wouldn't disagree with you. However, in the original video, they said not only is this the only way, but this is the best way. And the situations in which were described that you would use this for is active shooter, hostage rescue, or if your daughter was being attacked by somebody in a room down at the end of your hallway. Well, if my daughter was being attacked by a person and I needed to respond with my rifle for whatever reason, I'm not gonna enter the room with my rifle underneath my arm because in my mind, I'm entering a hostage situation and that's gonna take me longer to get to where I need to be to take an accurate shot. If you're responding to an active shooter, you mostly or sometimes, a lot of the time, it's a larger venue. You're outside, you're rounding corners, buildings, inside auditoriums, schools, gymnasiums, cafeterias. I'm not gonna round the corner and have to take a shot on a bad guy who's running around the school with a gun with my rifle underneath my arm. So in my opinion, that idea decreases your accountability of gunfire and takes you longer to get to where you actually should be to begin with. If you found this information valuable, make sure you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below and I'll see you on the next one.